most of the uh, failures in agriculture production or in input supply may not necessarily be attributed to COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So all in all, one could say that the agricultural sector is still rearing from the three-year consecutive droughts that have quite a major impact on the agricultural sector, much more than we can attribute to COVID-19 at the moment. Having said that, of course, you may recall that agriculture sector is divided into two. You have the livestock subsector, and you also have the crop subsector. Mm -hmm. And within the two subsectors, you also have your commercial subsector and your communal or subsistence subsector. Mm -hmm. And the impact of both drought and the impact of COVID are not necessarily the same on both of these sectors. Mm. To start with, for the communal sector, these are the most vulnerable uh, candidates when you have any shock in the production system or in the value chain, either by a natural disaster or by a man-made disaster. In the sense that first they are starting from a base where they do not have the requisite uh, resources in terms of uh, equipments, in terms of uh, production inputs, mm -hmm. in terms of expertise, so that when you have a shock like COVID, that brings in limitations. It tends in one way or another to limit their capacity to produce more, which then goes on to affect household food security. Mm -hmm. uh, we must also note that agriculture is mainly a labor-intensive uh, sector. And when you have a shock of this nature, which limits the gathering of people at one point or another, be it on the farm for production, that's plowing, be it for weeding, be it for bed scaring in terms of uh, uh, mahango or pearl millet, when you have that, then definitely it tends to affect the level of production that one might have uh, got mm -hmm. in the sense that the delays in reaching out to the rest of the farm and we coupled with the lack of equipment then delays the production process so that and when you combine that with a short and erratic rainfall pattern that we have it means you know one may not be able to cover quite a lot of land to open up plow and weed in time for him or her to get a proper crop mm -hmm. And that's number one. On the livestock sector, you do have also a situation where for the commercial farmers, government, as you know, we had put in measures at the onset of the uh, COVID-19, mm -hmm. whereby we identified critical and essential services under Gazette number 71, Five nine of 28 March 2020, and agriculture, the logistics related to that, the processing related to that, were all uh, classified as essential services. Mm -hmm. So meaning these were allowed to continue. However, they had to follow the prescribed uh, Ministry of Health and Social Services and WHO guidelines on how to go about their activities. 
Because of this, we'd find that where you had auctions, where you could bring together 50, 100 farmers bring their livestock, you are no longer able to do so. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the buyers of livestock are also not free to travel and to come and congregate at the auction crawls. So at the end of the day, that disturbed the buying pattern, reducing the throughput to the abattoirs. Oh. And that also made us not being able to timely meet our export commitments to our export markets like Norway, like China, like the EU. In fact, further down the line, the logistics were also affected in the sense that in the past, as we used to get our meat to Norway, which is our pristine market, where we take the highest price, and through South Africa and China, which took about 28 days. Mm -hmm. Now, because of the COVID-2019, we have to reroute our consignment through World's Day, going all around to China, and then back to Norway, which extends the period of delivery to 52 days. All right. That is a significant loss in terms of business.